shit like I'm in the game. Roll this shit like I'm in the game. Whack this bitch like I wanna flame. Tell her why she she's your wife. Well, 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 welcome back everyone, it's Remedy, this is the Wizard Hands Podcast, episode motherfucking three. So, a couple of exciting things actually. One, I actually have some things to talk about on this podcast, so we might actually get a bit of a flow going and uh, might interest some more people to listen this time around. Um, Two, it's nearly 4.20, I know I keep saying it, but it's coming up, 4.20, motherfuckers. Let's get stoned as fucked for 24-7. As you should all know, it's on the 20th of April this year. Next year is going to be 420 for the entire motherfucking month of April. So we should all all just stay blazed. The entire planet should just get stoned for an entire month and not do anything. Alright? Make all them fucking anti-fucking weed smokers do all the fucking work for once. Mm. Sorry, just... Drinking my yummy, yummy Assam Bold tea right now. Um, yeah, I'm pretty fucking blazed. No, I'm alright. I just got home from work about 20 minutes ago. Oh, funny enough. Alright, so I live in a place called the Pines. It's fucking ghetto as all shit. So, yeah, I live down Melbourne Way. And, um... We were just looking for a place to get, so we took the first one that we got when we were down here, and you could tell that it was, <laughs> you could tell that it was pretty rough. Like, it's like, yeah, this place isn't is an upper class. It's right next to like some really nice places. And it's very mixed. Um, they're buying, oh no, sorry, they're selling off all the department housing houses over the last, I think, ten years, and um, the area's become a lot nicer. So we came at a good time. Supposedly in like five to ten years, it's going to be like all private, privately owned homes um, for where I live. <laughs> just like, even just like my street is like rough, rough as fuck, man. Um, good to see this a little quiet. So like, maj- I don't need to say this quiet. Majority of my life, my neighbors that I've had <clears throat> have been like terrible neighbors, right? So... The neighbors that we currently live next to are fucking nut jobs. <sighs> I think they're like out the front, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna get into it. I, I might have some stories for you on another podcast, though. Should just do like an entire podcast on the history of my neighbors. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm walking home tonight, which I've been doing. For the last like three months, three, four months. Finish work at 10 and I'll walk home and my fucking area is so dark. There's like barely any street lights, it's like pitch black, trees like overgrowing the street. And um, yeah, I don't drive. <laughs> Never got around to it. Probably should do that soon. I'll keep you updated on me getting my license. Should do like a fucking vlog of me going for my license and shit. Just upload it on YouTube. That would be fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, so I'm walking home tonight, probably halfway home. There's like two blokes walking towards me. Lads, as you would say. It's like in their fucking Nike shorts, <laughs> their Nike shoes and their Nike hats, and then like Adidas hoodies. They're just like walking. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I get up to them, one of them's just like standing in the middle of the road with like this giant fucking golf club. I'm like, fuck. This whole time, nothing has happened except once I got attacked by a dog, but I scared it off. So anyway, um, this dude's just standing there and I'm like, this is good. Fuck it. I got my headphones in, so I can't hear anything, but I've turned the volume down all the way and I turn left onto the street going up towards my house and they start walking up in the middle of the street. They're not threatening looking. They just look like young blokes having fun, like me and my mates used to do. And they're like walking up the street, one's on the phone, he's talking about shuds. <laughs> Fucking 
Why would you fucking smoke all the shards in one fucking night? That's a fucking waste. He's like, you should fucking cap it. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, then there's a possibility that this might get a little bit weird. And I'm walking and he starts like walking to, to the left and I'm like to the left, but back from him. He's like skinny guy about my height. Just walking on his phone. He hangs up the phone, starts playing music and he starts walking in front of me. So I slow down and like I was walking at a fast pace, but I just didn't want to like walk past him just in case I like spooked him. <laughs> like maybe he thought I was like going to go him or something. I just, I just don't like conflict at all. So I'm walking and his mate's walking up the middle of the road, still fucking swinging this golf club at the ground and shit. He starts walking to the left and he walks up on the footpath in front of me. And he's like swinging around the golf club. So I like walk to the right down onto the road and I'm walking up and he just turns around and he's like, he's like I'm not going to do anything to you. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, I didn't think you were. <laughs> and I start walking and his mate, his other mate, the skinny one's like going, oh, nah, bro, we can fucking, we can fucking tell that you're a fucking local and all this shit. And he's like... So you don't need to fucking worry. He's like, I can, I can understand why it's a bit frightening. And I thought he was going to say having a dude walk out the street swinging a golf club at night. Because I'm like, that's fucking suspicious as all hell. And he, he's, he's like, I can understand that it might be frightening having a guy walking around the street with a machete over his shoulder. And I look at him. He's like half a meter in front of me, if that. I look at him. He's just got this like fucking massive fucking machete on his shoulder. All right. Now, fuck. I'm so happy. I'm good at just like talking to anyone. Like I know I choke a lot and stuff while I'm talking on the podcast, but I'm still getting used to having a conversation by myself. Um, but when I talk to people, I'm fucking great at it. I can talk to anyone from any culture, any background, just great at it. So I just start talking to him, just like saying how like I don't mind the place and I like that it's like a mixture culture and shit and it's not one of the worst places I've lived in because like I'm from I'm from the Illawarra, which has like the highest crime rate in Australia in that area. It's a pretty fucking small area to have the highest crime rate in Australia. It might have changed since I was there, but it was the highest crime rate in Australia. When I was living up there, um, from Wollongong, brah, fucking Wollongong, fucking shit all. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just I was just talking to him, and then he just like walks up, starts like tagging on this for sale sign out the front of a house. I'm just like, have a good night, boys, and just walk off. My fucking heart is just like pounding in my chest because there's one thing that I know about people. They can fucking change very quickly. So, like, these guys could have been, one, fucking pretending to be nice, and then they're going to fucking roll me, which isn't impossible, considering they both had fucking weapons at nighttime, wearing fucking dark clothes and hoodies, being all, like, sus and talking about meth and shit. Or two, they could have been really fucking nice. And I could have said the wrong thing, or they could have got the wrong feel, or anything could have fucking happened, and they could have fucking changed the way that they were acting towards me. And I was like in no, like, I was like not able to defend myself against two dudes, one holding a golf club, one holding a machete. Not fucking happening. Like, I'd probably fucking try and dodge and get my fucking ears cut off or something. So that was about like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> That was a that was a great, great end to my night. Pretty sure I had a dude coming to work using a stolen card as well because he was like tapping for a one dollar coffee. And then he went and got the coffee. And he comes back. He's like, "Oh, can I get those meat pies?" And I was like, "All right." And he's like, starts tapping. And it's like decline. He's like, Fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Today was a long day. Fucking buggered. Anyway, so if you've been listening to the previous podcast you would know that i'm currently studying at the australian institute of music in melbourne um and last time i was talking about how in a week or so i had 
to hand in assignments and exam do exams, and that I was like doing anything not to pay attention to that fact. <laughs> so I totally regret that decision. And I spent the last two days doing these two assignments, and one of them was they had to make a business plan for a non-for-profit organization that's tackling a current social issue in Australia. And then you had to pick a board of directors that you had to research that would suit that and argue why. So I didn't, I did it all in one day, probably spent 12 hours all up on it. It's like 4,000, 4,000 words. It was supposed to be 2,000. I ended up doing 4,000. I chose like the homelessness issue in Australia at the moment. And uh, we're setting up like a fundraiser through national festivals and shit. That was fucked, man. I, I hate research. Like, I like looking into things that I'm interested in, but when it's like research for something specific, I just does my fucking head in. But then when I do the assignment and I have like 24 hours to hand the fucking thing in, I totally regret not doing the research. So that's a lot of fucking reading. But I pretty much, pretty much write everything off the top of my head. And like, I lose so much marks because I don't reference. Like, I don't quote people, but I don't reference properly. Like, I'll talk about statistics and shit. But don't fucking ever reference it. Because I don't know where the fuck I read it. And I don't feel that I should have to look that up. Like, I've already learnt that. It's in my mind and I've written it down from previous knowledge. Why should I then have to go find proof of it to quote in the assignment? Why can't I just put in the reference list at the end of the bibliography? Does my head in. Like, I understand it. It's like, you're supposed to be crediting and fucking proving that you did your research and understand how to do that shit, which I do. I just, fuck, does my head in. So I did that one. And then the other one was I had to do part two of the first assignment that I handed in before is another four reflections on documentaries and shit that we've been watching in class. And that was like another 4,000 words. It was only supposed to be 2,000. And I, I, th I think I'm going to do terrible on that one. Like I just fucking rambled. <sighs> I'm not academic at all. But yeah, so I got a presentation, which I'm doing on Tech 9 and his song Nina. For his album, Nina. It's going to be a good album, I reckon. But yeah, I had to do a presentation, act like I'm doing like a radio pitch. So that should be interesting. And then I got an exam for making money in the entertainment industry. Which is a lot of maths. And I'm terrible at maths. Uh, anyway, sorry for just rambling on about what I'm up to with my schoolwork. The point was, I regretted my last decision. And I wish I studied. A little bit. So, sorry. How good was that fucking UFC 236 last night? Max Holloway versus Dustin Poirier. Poirier? Terrible with pronouncing that. It's Poirier, I think. Dustin Poirier. Like, I've always kind of been a fan of UFC... But I'm not a huge fan of watching sports and that. Like, I don't follow teams and stuff, so I never follow people properly with UFC. I just watch matches here and there. But I'm so fucking glad I caught that. Because, like, I know Daniel Poirier from... Uh, Daniel Poirier. <laughs> Fuck. See? Dustin Poirier from his fight with McGregor. <laughs> if you can call it that. And... The first match with Holloway, which I won't call that a fight. That was pretty, pretty quick with that. But this fight was fucking brutal. I think it was round five. Could be wrong though. My memory is terrible with shit like this. But I'm pretty sure it was round five. Um, Poirier just smashed Holloway. Like it was like fucking brutal, man. That was... 
swinging at each other and going crazy. I will give it to Holloway though. He did he did come back at him. I think in the third round, just start fucking smashing him, smashing him up against the fucking cage. I was a bit worried for a moment there. Oh, but fuck, man, that was good. I like, <laughs> I like um, at the end end of the match when they're in the, I think they're in the octagon still, and it was like, pretty sure it was Joe Rogan doing the interview. I could be wrong though. Same thing, bad memory. Um, they're like talking to each other, and uh, they're like, I think Holloway apologizes for like swearing at poor yeah in the interview, and they're just like. It's war, man. It's all good. He's like, you're a good bloke. And they're just like heaps chill with each other. Holloway's standing there with like this mad fucked up face. Poirier's eyes all fucking swollen and shit. I just, I like, I like watching fights that end like that because I'm not a fan of boxing because, like, don't get me wrong. (laughs) I like watching a good fight. But I'm not a fan of boxing because I feel that it's not like it's not like a respectful fight. Like I know I know there are respectful fighters, but it's not like a respectful fighting style. Like it's just beat the fuck out of each other. I'm I'm the man kind of thing. But when I watch UFC, because it's mixed martial arts, I feel that there should be like a true sense of martial arts, which I've heard, I think it's one fight club. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's one fight club. They're kind of following more of a traditional martial arts competition culture, which I'd be interested to, interested to watch. But yeah, like I feel like these people learning fighting styles and defense arts They've been like handed down through generation. I know through like the seventies and eighties, there was like a boom in these places all throughout the fucking Western world that were just like dudes with no real fucking training, pretending to be like senseis and shoguns and shit. But when you have a fight. That's also the second match that they've had. And one just like beats the fuck out of the other one. Like he just kept fucking going. He just beat the fuck out of him. And then pretty much apologizes for it. And tells him he's a good fucking dude. And they like congratulating each other at the end of it. Standing there all fucked up from each other moments before. I think that's like a huge... Um, what's the fucking word? Might not even, I don't fucking know. I just think it's cool. I think it's like following that like traditional style. Like, and and even still like back in the day with like samurais and shit, of course there was like ruthless motherfuckers. What's that fucking dude? He's like that crazy fucking samurai. Used to like rock up late to tournaments and shit. To like fuck with people's heads. Like tack them with wooden swords instead. Like it'd rock up with wooden swords. There's like movies and shit made about him. Fuck, I never think of it. I think he's that fucking author of the Five Rings. Terrible names. I don't know. I'm thinking about, um,. Getting into boxing, though, as a training. Uh, I don't want to fight. I think I'll be terrible at it. <laughs> um, but I have, like, I have terrible balance in footwork and shit. And I, I think that doing boxing would be a great way to fix that. Um, it's just great for fitness. So I've been looking into that. I think I'm going to stop my gym membership because I just don't go. I just work out work out at home. So I think I'd rather pay the money, go and do boxing. I think, think boxing and then I might do some like jiu-jitsu for defense purposes. 
which I think boxing and jujitsu go well together because you should know how to strike if you're going to like try and grapple people. But what the fuck do I know? Like I've been in fights, I've had my head fucking smashed in by a bunch of people, fucked up a lot of cunts, but I never, <laughs> never hit him like a fight a fighter. It's just like out of fear of being fucked up. Oh, what a fucking week. What a fucking week. I don't even like, I don't think I even like followed much, much news this week. Like at all. <laughs> I think I just stayed pretty much away from all that shit. Let's see what's going on in the world. Justin. Justin. No. Computer. No. Commuter chaos in Melbourne as Sandringham line suspended. What? It's been like that for like a month. Ah, fucking tea. I love tea. Used to hate it so much. Man, these um Boeing seven three seven Maxes, <laughs> whoever fucking put that together is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Everyone's just like cancelled them. Like Australia just doesn't want them anymore. America's cancelled all flights until August, which I don't know, man. After that, I don't like. I don't think the world's gonna trust them. I think they're just gonna can it. Uh, I've never flown. Like, ever. I'm fucking terrified of it. And it's like, like, growing up, I had, like, a huge fear of heights. And, uh, I don't think it's so much of, like, a fear of heights anymore. I just get really bad vertigo when I'm up high. So, I'm worried about that fucking with me. I don't want to throw up on a plane. That's, like, a huge, huge thing. Like, I just don't want to, I reckon that'd be fucking, fucking devastating, just being trapped there. Like, even if it was just, like, an hour flight. But that's all gonna change soon, So I have to fucking fly between Sydney and Melbourne a couple of times in the near future. Possibly go to Vietnam with my boy B-I-double motherfucking G. The high noy god. World most dangerous bird kills owner in US backyard. <laughs> Cassowaries are fucking deadly, man. If you haven't, go check out Cassowaries. And if you have, check out Cassowaries kicking. <laughs> You get kicked by a fucking cassowary, you are fucking disemboweled, man. They'll put their foot through your fucking stomach. Man, it's so difficult to find fucking news. I'm just, like, trying to find, like, the top stories of the world at the moment. It's just, like, sending me to all this fucking stupid shit. I feel sometimes, like, Google is just, like, so stupid. <laughs> I don't know if it's on purpose. Trolls target the scientist who became the face of the black hole photo. That's just rude. Oh, cool. Japan's cleaning up fucking Fukushima. Uh, don't even get me on fucking Pauline Hansen. <laughs> what a cunt. <laughs> Pauline Hansen is a fucking cunt. A fucking hater. Uh, fucking One Nation shit. Donald Trump's 
tweet about Congresswoman's 9-11 comments endangering lives. The White House says the US President bears no ill will towards Muslim Congresswoman Ilhan Amar, despite his tweeting out video purporting to show her being dismissive of the 2001 terrorist attacks, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi asked him to remove it. Why is this fucking news, man? Why is any of this fucking news? This is terrible. This is like the ABC headlines. (sighs) Yeah, more homophobic fucking politicians. More anti-Semitic politicians. Bikies shooting people. So this is why I don't fucking... This is why I don't follow news. It's fucking boring. I don't care about this shit. No fucking means anything. And half of it's covering up fucking something else. Ugh. Had a woman come into work today. She um filled up petrol about a week ago. Maybe two weeks ago. And she couldn't pay it. She didn't have a card on her. Which, to be honest, I think she just sometimes can't afford to pay for petrol. Because she used to know the owner and she said she used to have a tab. So I feel that sometimes she can't afford to pay for petrol. She supposedly has like 10 kids living at her fucking house. She's got like so many children and grandchildren. And like her older children are still living there like 30 year olds. And in my opinion, she's a local. She comes in all the time. She should be allowed to do that. Like, I know she's going to come back and pay it. She should be allowed to do it. But because it's, like, corporation-owned, they won't fucking let you do it. Like, if I was managing that place and she came in and was like, look, every second Thursday, I need to go to work the next morning and I can't pay for fuel... Will you let me put 20 bucks in? Fuck yeah, man. Just do what we do when we have people come in like she did and couldn't fucking pay for it. Just let her pay for it later. Make a record of it. Pay for it later. Like, I don't think we should do it to everyone because, like, a lot of people would come in and fucking rip you off. Do it to people that come in all the time that you know have money and will be able to pay for the fucking fuel when they get paid. I just don't see the problem with it. She's getting, like, fucking anxious as fuck it's like she likes talking to me she's an old older lady she likes talking to me because i just like i'm a good listener and um like i suffer from fucking mad depression and anxiety man like that's like a huge fucking thing with me doing this doing these podcasts makes me incredibly fucking anxious even like even at the idea that i could just edit it which i don't like the idea of i don't normally edit my shit <laughs> like I record it listen to it like 40 million times in the night before I upload it and I upload it the next day so yeah she was like having fucking mad anxiety tonight and I'm like trying to tell her that it's okay but like my boss had called her and told her she was gonna like hand it into the police because that's what we do after 72 hours we hand it into the police and they get them to pay for it or take them to court. Because that's... Like, most people that do that are trying to fucking avoid paying for it. They just never come back in. We have, like, a stack of fucking forms of, like, people's license plates and shit that the cops are dealing with at the moment. And, um, yeah. I was just watching her, like, you poor fucking woman. Like, like people would look at her and be like, you shouldn't have had fucking so many kids and you should clean your act up and shit. But she works full time. Like... People don't see that shit. She works full time. It's not like she's she's like fucking bludgeon and having like ten children at home. She works full time. And I just I felt I felt bad for her. She's just like trying to have a conversation with someone that's not one of the ten kids at her house. But the person that is there to listen to her is also the person she owes like fifty dollars worth of fuel to. Hmm. 
It's a weird world. We don't, like, we don't take into consideration that majority of people at points in their life suffer anxiety and aren't even aware of it. Like, I was in the car with mum the other day and we were going into the mall, going around a roundabout and there was two boys, probably like 14 on their bikes on the edge of the roundabout and they were trying to cross to the roundabout and then from the roundabout to the next corner and one of the boys just fucking like freaks out and just as we're coming around the roundabout just like rides off in front of us he wasn't being a smart ass I could see the fucking like questionable fear in his face he was like fuck and just rode off and like thank god my mum was watching and the other bloke was there and I was just like thanks buddy and he was like no problem because I just wanted to let him know that he shouldn't do that shit. I wish I wish people did that shit with me when I was younger. Like even even if I was like younger, I was like, "Oh fuck off, dickhead." Later on in life, I would have been like, "Oh, okay, that's what that shit was." But yeah, like I became fully aware that when kids do shit like that, it's like intense anxiety that's going through their system. It's not them just doing stupid shit. Like when I think back. To when I was a kid and I did fucking stupid shit. Majority of the time, I now recognize that I was having anxiety because I was out of my comfort zone. I was learning shit at the time. So I was still not like fully aware of what things were in like proper perspective. And it's like disorientating, very disorientating. I think our bodies like go through shock when we're kids. Like when, once you start going into that, um, age where you're like mind is functioning is like a thought processor you're like having your own thoughts kind of thing ah fuck I think it's just so overwhelming I reckon that's why like a lot of kids shoot people in America they just like get a gun and then they just have like this overwhelming anxiety like when you hold a gun it's like a powerful thing even if you don't shoot it like there's a reason when you're a kid and you get like a toy gun or something, it's like the coolest fucking shit in the world. You feel powerful and invincible. Not because you're like imagining that it's just like it represents one of the most powerful things on earth and you have it in your hands. Like, when, ah, oh, I just can't even imagine. Like, if I picked up like a fucking 1911 when I was a kid, I would have been fucking shooting everything. Would have fucking murdered everyone in sight. Without even realising. It's crazy fucking shit, man. Anyway. So. I'm kind of wanting to like. Flow with this. um Kind of music. Music topic once every podcast. Like the, f- like the first time it started with Nipsey Hussle. Because he died. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh because he died. I just now realised how bad that kind of sounds. That I like, created the thing for the death of Nipsey Hussle. But like I did. Like, like I love music. It's my passion. It's why I'm at uni. Um, so yeah. I'm going to roll with that. I'm not always going to do hip hop. But... It is like the main main genre that I listen to now, so a lot of it's gonna be hip hop. But I w- I will try and do like like I love metal and rock and oh, blues. I fucking love blues. So I will do other things. I just realised that the Australian artist Dylan Joel has released his album. I think he released it a while back. Maybe like a month or two. Maybe a month. Because he released Run to the River. Maybe two and a half months ago. Three months. That's a fucking great song. It's very, very Ed Sheeran. <laughs> like it is. It just reminds me of him so much. But like the Aussie Ed Sheeran. It's fucking catchy, but like hella smooth and upbeat. Just definitely check that out. Like even if you're not into hip hop, 
this dude is awesome. He's um an acoustic guitarist that also does hip hop. I um got really into him. Got really into him a couple years back. I think he did some stuff with Bliss and Esso or something. And uh, I knew who he was. And then my mate Alex goes by Coast and Ocean. Um, was opening for him at Rad Bar in Wollongong. And um, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fucking see Alex. Like I like I knew who Dylan Joel was. He released that swing song with Mantra and DJ Ism from Bliss and Esso. That's that's it. He fucking did that. Um that's a great song. You should check that out. I really like that. Mantra's a fucking genius. Love his shit, man. Uh his song Fear is great. Anyway, yeah, so Alex was playing at Rad Bar. I love watching him play, man. Coast and Ocean. Fucking check that shit out, man. Coast and Ocean is amazing. Like, he does the acoustic hip-hop shit. But, like, he's singing, man. He plays guitar and he sings and he does loops. And, oh, it's amazing. Like, that dude, every show you go to is different. He plays, like, different for different vibes and stuff. It's so good. Um, I got to open for him with a uh, big one night. Up at Lazy Bones in Sydney. That was fucking fun, man. That was good. Um, but yeah, so he was... He was... Um, my mate... From like a course I did... For business. I think I went to the same high school as him, but we didn't know each other. And uh, yeah. He's he's released... Um, two EPs, I think. His latest one is... The Doobies Girl EP. Check out Doobies Girl by Coast and Ocean. It's a fucking great song, man. And Lindsay Lohan by him as well. I really dig that. He's just... It's got a way with melodies and flows. And... Oh, it's... <laughs> like, just check it out. Just go check it out. Can't explain it. Shout out to Alex. Uh, yeah, so... Went to the Dylan Joel gig. And, um... Fucking, he was, he was performing blank. Pretty sure he was performing blank. And, uh, I was at the front with Alex, because, like, Rad Bar's just, like, a flat area. There's no stage. You're on, like, the same, there's no barrier between where the artist plays and that. You're just there. It's a very small, small little venue. And, uh... Yeah, he was, he was doing blank and I was singing along and he put the mic at my mouth, but he tripped and just like fucking smashed me in the mouth with the mic. Like, it was an accident, so I didn't care. I was letting go on. And um, I didn't notice at the time, but after the show, we were outside smoking a joint, me and Alex, and I could feel something in my mouth. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that? And I, like, I had like a cap over my tooth. And... um. He'd like displaced it, like it had popped off from the seal, and there was like an obvious gap between the cap and the tooth. And I was he's fuck, so I just like pushed it back into place. Ended up getting knocked out like two weeks later. I woke up with my old dog Rasta on my chest. He was like an English staff, he was tank as fuck, so he was like so heavy, I couldn't breathe. And he came in for like to lick my face, but like was so excited, like, because I woke up, he just fucking headbutt me so hard in the mouth, and just fucking knocked it out, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, Dylan Joel's released, You Were Made to Blossom, fuck, it's a good album, man, I've listened to it, like, 20 times in three days, but, uh, I haven't taken the time to, like, properly listen to it, like, critically sit there and listen to every word and try and think of every meaning. I think it's like a, a relationship album. <laughs> like that's the vibe I get. Like it's like bipolar as fuck. It's kind of all over the place. Like love and hate songs and shit. Um, done with you is a great song as well. Run to the river, done with you, dirty magazines. And, uh, I think it's kind of like you as well, 
I like that. He's great, man. Just check him out. Dylan Joel. Check out Authentic Lemonade. And you were made to blossom. It's new app. It's crazy shit, man. So, kind of lost what I was going to talk about. Because I'd already, like, so this is what happened. Um, when I was talking about Dylan Joel, like at the beginning when I was talking about the music and stuff. Um, I got like, I looked down and it's just like, memory fool. Because I record on a H4, yeah, H4 and Zoom handy recorder. Because I've got a shit laptop, like this laptop is just so old. So I can't like record through it, so I have to record on this. And it's great, but the memory card's like small as fuck. And I was just like, what? <laughs> it was just stuffed on like 36 minutes. So only a couple minutes ago, I had to just like start recording. But um, I like stop it and I play it back and there's just no sound. I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, maybe it's just, it cut off before 36 minutes. So I got back to like 22 minutes, play. No sound. I'm like, oh my God. So I like skip back to the beginning. No sound. I'm like, fuck, man. I've just been sitting here fucking talking into a fucking microphone. Like, I got this motherfucker. This third time a charm. I'm going to do a fucking podcast that kind of flows. And I know what I'm talking about. And give something to the people that are fucking listening. And I just fucking recorded nothing for 36 minutes and 53 seconds. So I'm just like doing whatever I can. I'm like going through and I'm like deleting the last podcast. Because I haven't gone through and deleted the podcast off it that I did previously. I delete it. And I'm, I nearly deleted this file. I was like, fuck it. And I was like, oh, wait. So I cancel out and I go back and I press play. And it lets me play because there's memory and it won't let me play anything if there's no fucking memory. So I had a fucking heart attack. So that might be why that stopped flowing for a bit there because I just had to like jump in. I might have even like spoken twice about what I was saying because I just jumped in. I didn't listen to what I was talking about before. But yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see what else I've been playing. Um, oh, fucking JL from Strange Music released a, a, I guess like an EP, it's four tracks, Digital Congo, Phase 1, check that out, that is great, I think he does a song, Tokyo Drift, yeah, Tokyo Drift is awesome, and No Smoke, that's, I love this dude, man, is, um, I think his last album is Dibkiss? Could be wrong. Let's check that out. Oh no, contraband with Stevie Stone. That's it. That was fucking great. I dig that. But yeah, Tech Nine presents Dip Kiss. That's the album. It's when JL released Strange Music. I think. I don't think he'd done an album with them before that. He's dope, man. He's a different kind of artist. Just check that ish out. Been playing Anderson Dot Pack. If that's how you pronounce it. I don't even know the dude. Might just be Anderson Pack. His uh Ventura album. That's pretty good. I I like like bluesy shit. I remember when I first heard him, I fucking hated him. It was like when I was kinda of getting into hip hop and I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> got like Andre three thousand on it. It's got Smokey Robinson. That's a dope track. Make it better with Smokey Robinson. Check that out. It's got a weird voice, man, but he fucking works it. It's just got like... It's got that thang. You know? That shit that people got. That charisma shit. <laughs> the reason why I was worried about... um The fucking podcast being deleted. That I just... Re- like, in recording is because... I was like, fuck, man, I am not going to remember any of that UFC shit that I talked about. It would just be gone forever. I was like, thinking about all the rambles about my school. It might have been good if I lost that one. He's probably be like, what the fuck, man? But, um, yeah, so... Probably won't be talking too much longer. I am fucking tired. It is like one in the morning. 
Um, I'm going to be recording the podca- podcast on 420, or at least releasing it. I, I th- I'm thinking about doing it like at midnight. Okay, I'm fucked up recording the podcast and then sleeping, going to the 420 picnic at Flagstaff Park in Melbourne. If you do listen to this, which I doubt you will, because I don't think a lot of people are going to listen to this, before then, go to Flagstaff Park on April 20th, this Saturday coming. Get there around like 2 o'clock, get nice and fucked up, stay for 420. Don't drink, it's not... Drinking, there will be a police presence. Don't drink. It's not about that. And clean up after yourselves. Can't be getting stoned in public. And then leaving fucking rubbish like a bunch of stoners. So yeah, I'll probably release that on Saturday. I like, kind of know what I'm going to talk about. But I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm... Fuck, I'm not that intellectually inclined. Like, it's just probably going to be a lot of rambles. I knew this one guy that got stoned and he got cured from fucking hepatitis. I don't know a guy that got stoned and got cured from hepatitis, by the way. That'd be fucking hilarious, though. Yeah. So wait, wait for that shit to drop. Sorry, I'm just fucking so stoked right now. (laughs) Ah, you know it's funny though. I've been releasing these podcasts on Tuesday as the Wizard Hands, and if you heard the first podcast, you know the Wizard Hands is a reference to like 420 culture, and uh. On Tuesdays, we call it Chuff and Tuesday. Because on Tuesdays, me and the boys would fucking put our money together, get a fucking mad mix going, start chuffing away. Didn't even realize that. That's where the whole Chuff clan came from, me and my family. Fuck, I'm an idiot. And I'm lame. Totally aware of this. I'm starting to, um... Come back. I I slipped away for a while. From, uh, who I am. Over the last year. And, uh... Started putting a lot of hate towards myself and others and uh i'm coming back coming back from it a huge a huge amount of that um let me reword this so it doesn't sound weird so i'm coming back from a dark place kind of finding myself again and a huge inspiration I guess not inspiration a huge motivator has been Joe Rogan it's a podcast like fuck man like it's not even just the people that he interviews that dude is fucking crazy intelligent like he he thinks he's a fucking moron but he's not like I disagree with a bunch of shit he thinks is right and stuff which is I think why I like it as well that I like him so much because like I debate myself while I'm watching it. Like, why does he think that? And am I the one thinking wrong and shit? So, like, I really like it. I love those shows, man. Like, I haven't even been watching them too long and I've probably watched more of them than majority people that I know. <laughs> like, get dug into that shit. Because I'm, like, keeps into um, stuff they don't want you to know. I think I said that on the last podcast. Like, they're fucking good, man. I like... 
I like conspiracies like this. Like, these are, like, pretty proven con- conspiracies. But then they also talk about, like, he- heaps of wacky shit that's, like, documented. Like, I think, like, that's the purpose is, like, all this shit is documented. Even if it's not true, it's still documented. Like, some dude in fucking government had to, like, go through and document all this shit. I'm trying to find one. Fuck. Like, they got, like, Third Eye Spies, the CIA, and Quiet Minds with Russia. It's like talking about super-powered LSD-fueled fucking CIA agents and shit. Using, like, DMT and stuff. It's like documented. The heads are documented. Yeah, check them out. They're cool. Um. Fuck man, I'm so stoned. It's like such like a doubt. Like it was just like so much energy, kind of in comparison to the last couple podcast and it's just like (laughs) it's probably like my cue to go anyway probably release this tomorrow check out my podcast follow the wizard hands t-h-e-w-i-z-z a-h-a-n-d-s (laughs) on instagram and twitter Follow that shit on Spotify and Apple Music and shit. Fucking, yeah. Contact me, man. Tell me some shit to talk about. Disagree with me. Have an argument. Really want to get into this shit. Have some fucking debates with people. I don't care, man. You can be like... Some douchebag that wants me to fucking talk about why racism is real. And it's the right way to be. Because I'll fucking look into it. I'll research it. And then I'll fucking tell you that you're a fucking moron. Anyway. Have a good night, day. Wherever you are. Smoke a blunt. Help someone out. Be happy. And let's uh, let's do this again. Catch me on 420. Motherfuckers. Cheers.